Okay, here we go. I've got a couple of small measuring cups here. Uh, these are older clear plastic cups. Um, they're only an 8 ounce pour, which is okay because I'm going to put 8 ounces of each, which means it's going to be a 16 ounce pour down each side. Actually, I'm backing off the 8 ounce pour idea. I'm going to make a 6 ounce pour on each side. 6 ounces of part A, 6 ounces of part B. Before I put the cap back on the resin, I want to wipe off the threads where the cap goes. Just want to keep things neat. Just want to keep things neat. Okay, I'm going to put another 6 ounces, and this will be of the part A. And while it's sitting here like this, it's the bubbles are rising to the top from the light mixing of the uh, product. Okay, I'm going to pour in part A first. And to be sure it doesn't spill on the outside of the cup, as the last bit is dripping, I simply rotate the cup and turn it back upright. Now I add the colored part, the part B. This is a one-to-one -one ratio of, res of urethane resin. Very low viscosity on both. It's almost well, like thick water, I guess you could say, or mm, maybe even mm, skim milk or half and half milk, about that thickness. I'm going to pour down into one side, then I'm going to tilt the mold to make sure it gets everywhere. I'm going to rock it back and forth to make sure that the, um, the urethane product does not uh, trap any bubbles, even though there's powder in the mold, I want to make sure nothing is trapped. Of course you could see this is a what I call a dedicated table for messy projects. The brown paper on this table is good for using spray adhesives on products and whatnot. I'm just going to tilt it and I want to get slowly, slowly, slowly get down, get funky. I want this to get everywhere it needs to be. Okay, believe it or not, the darn antlers have been filled up. So, let me take this off of here. I want to rotate the mold. I'm going to spill out excess. And I'm going to rotate the mold. I want this to get everywhere in the mold. The little bit that's left in here, I want it to be everywhere. I'm going to pour resin back in the mold. Darn stuff is starting to bubble, so I got to work quick here. It's a pretty fast setting product. I can see it going into the antler tips. You can see the darkness of the mold. I'm going to tap on the tips a little bit to make sure the air is knocked out, like so. And we're going to pull back, tilt it back, make sure it all runs out of the tips, and tip it back to make sure it goes back into the tips. And this might have been a little too much for one side. Put it back in the cradle. And I want to tip the cradle. keep the stuff flowing on into one side only and so far it looks like I haven't had any leakage which is that's a nice thing now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm moving it around to the burr of the antlers I want to make sure the burrs of the antlers are covered It's starting to thicken up quite a bit. I want to wipe the mix off of the skull plate area. Yeah, it's very thick. It's like 
Okay, well here it goes. It's in its final mix. There we are. Yeah. Well, let's hope this got everywhere. Molding and casting is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And it is true. I'm hoping it got everywhere. I have areas that I can feel might have air trapped in them. I don't, I don't know. First pour is always tough to determine if everything got everywhere it was supposed to get. Plus this is thinner down here. This part of the antler is thinner. So it will take a little longer for it to set. And it's really hard to determine with the light if... Well, I, I see dark on the inside. So I'm hoping it got everywhere it was supposed to get. Now, mm, the antler tips might not have any... No, I don't think they do. Oh wait. What? We're getting I'm getting heat. That's the only thing about wearing gloves. You really can't <laughs> you can't feel as well when you're covered. But uh, I'm feeling warmth down the main beam, which means it's setting. Now the tines are thin, so if it got down this far. It's going to be a while before this actually sets here. I won't know. I will say that uh, mixing up 12 ounces of resin, 6 ounces of part A, 6 ounces of part B, was about uh, 6 ounces too much. That's an awful lot of waste in that cup. I, gotta try, I, want, I want to avoid that for the next pour. All I can do now is walk away from this while it sets a bit and um, I'm going to let this one side fully cure before I pour the second side. A um, reason being I'm going to check the mold really really well because I have areas here where I'm still collapsing the silicone, like on the tines. And I feel like they're strengthening up a little bit. I'm going to have to see what happens. I may need to go with a slower setting resin. This does set up rather quick. It sets up very quick. So... I may need to go with Easy Flow 90, which has a longer pot life and a one to two hour demold. Now this this right here on the main beam is beginning to harden up. But the tines, hmm, not so much. Well, I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee and uh, finish it up, and when I get back, I'll see what I've got on this side. Well, kids, I've let this thing sit for over an hour, and it's cooled to the touch. And pressing down on the tines, down all the way to their tips, feels like we're solid all the way through. Again, I will not know until I unmold it, but right now... I might have a good box of chocolates. I did, however, not install the wire. <laughs> this, uh, this is a very fast setting resin. I'm going to go ahead and pour the other side. I'm not going to put the wire in as well. Uh, then I'm going to order a set of the um, Easy Flow 90, which has a longer working time as well as a longer um, demold time. I think the demold time on that is one to two hours and I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Um, I'm not slow. I'm not fast. I'm what I refer to as half fast. Okay. Uh, 
And I would like to be able to get a wire into the main beams of the antlers. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and pour the second side. I'm only going to use half of what I used in the first side. I may get a better a better uh, distribution too. I don't, like I said, I'm not going to know until it's unmolded, but here we go. All right, I've gone and poured the second antler. Oh, she's starting to set up already. Okay, this is good. This is good. I've had just a little tiny bit of leakage, but I'm not really too concerned about that. The second side I mixed three ounces of part A, three ounces of part B for a six ounce pour. And I believe I've got a real good um, amount of resin. There's only very little left in the cup this time as opposed to the first pour which I had half of what I mixed up so very little. This is good. As I say I only have a very little leakage right here. That's not a lot. Uh, this side must have might have had a little wider gap somewhere on the seam. I'm hoping that the tape kept it closed, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to let this set for a good couple of hours. Uh, then I'm going to pour the skull plate area. in here with uh, uncolored. You know what? I might go ahead and use the pre-colored stuff just for the halibut because I um, it's a little shy at the antler burrs. It's just a little shy of resin at both antler burrs. So I'm going to go ahead and use the completely pre-colored resin. I'm going to go ahead and fill it. I might as well do that right now before she even sets. Didn't get the wire in, couldn't get the wire in. This stuff sets way too fast. All right, I've mixed up two ounces of part A, two ounces of part B for a four ounce pour. Hopefully this won't be too much, or if it is too much, hopefully there won't be too much left over. I'm mixing this up thoroughly. I'm doing figure eight stirring as well as all the way around, scraping the sides of the container. I, I can feel it already starting to heat up in the cup. I pinch a little pour spout. In we go. The reason I'm not too concerned about having the skull plate white for this particular casting is that this particular casting is like not going to be a wall display and even if it was it's such a short um, skull cap, a small skull cap that it would go on a um, It would have mache modeled over it to create a um, proper um, a proper look for an antler mount. I'm just going to have to hold this until she starts to kick. This should kick pretty quickly because it's um, real deep. It's a deep pour. And I may have to add a little bit to the front, but that's okay. I'm going to keep it tipped back like this so that the back kicks in. And here we go. She's kicking in beautifully. Now the back edge is right up to the top of the mold line, which is actually the underside of the skull plate area. I've got a little paper towel jammed underneath the rise to keep it in position for right now. Just a balled up piece of paper towel. 
And when this completely cures, and you'll know when it's completely cured when the dark band around the very end where it's thinnest, when that completely lightens out. After that's done, I'll make up an exceptionally small amount of resin. I mean, make up a, a half ounce mix and then tilt the mold level and finish the pour. Here we go. Let's get this jammed in here a little better so that it holds. There we are. There we go. There we are. That's well. Well, 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 well. Come on, you turd. Get the freck in there. There we go. All right, that's good. No wires in this casting. Well, we'll see what happens. All right, now I'm sure that the mold is sitting level. I've got a one ounce mix put together. And this is simply to fill in the balance of the skull mold. Does not need to be a lot. I just want to make sure the mold was level before I did this. Just put this in all the way across. Bring it up to level. Worst comes to worst, if it's a little over the top, it can be ground down with a, um, a belt sander, which is not a problem. Now this over here at the front, this may have been where some of the silicone leaked under the front of the uh, skull plate originally when, when the mold was made. That wasn't really sealed. I, cu I could have actually had put that skull plate in a bed of clay for a better result, but I did not. So ask me if I'm concerned about that little area and you will get a resounding, nah, I'm not too concerned. Now I am going to push it up because there is a little bit of shrinkage away from the first part of the casting. So I'm just going to work that up a little bit. And... Here's what I have left over. I guess I could have used, uh, oops, I guess I could have used about a half an ounce instead of a full one ounce. It looks like there's about a half ounce left in there. But on the casting resin, I'm not overly concerned. Um, like I say, it's 44 bucks for the quart kit, but that's a far cry from the expense of uh, silicone. And, uh, yeah, you could go cheaper if you want in the products. It's starting to set up. But um, I don't want to go cheap. So I go with what I know works for me. All I can do is recommend it to you. And we go from there. And you can see it starting to set up right here. That's definitely beginning to set. Beginning to set up in the cup too. Here it goes. Color change is happening. It's almost mm, magical. Now, what you'll notice about casting resins, the deepest part will start to kick in and cure first. The thinner part, which is the little bit of resin that's running up towards the back here, will take a little longer. All told, this should take, um, I don't know, seven minutes or so to set up. And a little bit in the bottom of the cup is starting to set up as well. It's getting thicker. It's not going through a cure yet because it's not quite, what's left in the cup down is not quite as deep as this section right here. So, I guess this is skull making. I guess I'm a skull maker now. So, skulls and antlers. Two bits. I'm going to start removing the masking tape from around the tines and main beams. I'm going to do the side I poured first. I'm 
hoping this went all the way through. I won't know until it's unmolded, but in the meantime, I'm going to continue to unwrap, well, yeah, unwrap the masking tape. We're going to untape the mummy and then uh, let it sit a couple of hours. Then reveal what I've got in the mold, what went wrong, what went right, what I can do to make it better, if need be. Okay, I found where the leak occurred. It's on the side with the deformity. Let's see how bad it is at the seam. Hopefully it didn't affect the uh, exterior of the casting, but I won't know until it's demolded. Like I said, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Well, let's open her up. Let's see what kind of chocolates we got. Take off the spanner board. This one bolt is just a little tight. Okay. There we go. There we are. Wah, wah, wah. All going into a nice little plastic container for safekeeping. Let's use the pliers where necessary. But we get these out of their respective places. Okay. Pull out the center section. And we'll start working it away from the casting. I'm going to loosen the tines. Turn it upside down. <clears throat> Try and kick it free. Be gentle. Don't be in too much of a rush to get it out. If you do that, you will break something, especially if there's a weak spot in the cast. All right, let's get this here. The tip. You have to work it. Nothing worthwhile in life is ever easy. Here we go. Here we go. That's free. Yeah, there we go. One side. Put this aside here. Now this is going to be a little tougher. This is the side I had all the leakage on, right here. So this may be a little more difficult to un unlock from the support cradle. I hope not, but we shall see what we shall see. All right, nice and easy, John. Don't go batshit crazy. Ooh, pardon my French. 
All right, let's get this loose. Gently, gently. Ooh, boy, we lost a lot of resin here. We had a lot of resin come out. I hope I don't have a weak spot in the cast. I don't know. I'll take it apart and we'll see. Break where the seal is made. Oh, completely. Ah, the alignment is off on this first cast. The alignment is way the hell off on this first cast. Yeah. The mold didn't line up properly. Did not line up properly on that side. Let's try this side and see what happens. See how easily the silicone comes apart where it was just used to secure it. It was just a light coating used to secure the antler. Uh, got a lot of flashing on this side. I don't think it's too bad. All the way down to the tip. And we'll get this off. Unlock the front of the mold. There we are. Now let's pull it over. That's just flashing. I thought it was silicone. That's not silicone. That's just flashing. Oh, there's a tine. Incomplete. This tine is complete. It says a little air pocket right here. Actually, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. This little section right here, which I thought might have been incomplete. Right here. Right here. That's not a, an air pocket. That's a, that's a, a little piece that's missing in the antler. Let's continue. There's no air bubbles on the surface. That's always good. That's always good. Now I'll go back to the other side. Pull this tine loose, get it free from the mold. There we go. Now the second one is coming and the rest of the antler is out. It's a good base color. Good base color. Let's get this going here. Now this was really well sealed. I have to open that up again. Remember I, I made a cut down the center of the deformity. So that was sealed. I'm removing the, the sealing silicone. Now even though silicone will stick to itself, the fact that the mold was powdered prior to putting it back together is what's allowing the sealing silicone, the, the, the silicone glue that held the seam together, that's what's allowing it to come apart. And that may have been the culprit in not letting this completely seal. Okay, here's the first casting. It's a little worse for wear, uh, has a little left on it to be desired. Okay, the first rack. All in all though, it's not a bad representation of my deer's antler. Uh, here's the little, the little defect in his antler right here. That's well represented. biggest problem with it is go to the back side the first side here is great not bad at all it's just some flashing easy to clean up very easy to clean up this side however the seam of the mold did not line up in the cradle I have one side higher than the other side but seen from the front it's not that bad now, 
If I wanted to use this for a mount, I would simply grind this down. This section right here, I would grind that away. Not a bad representation oh, of my no, white-tailed no. deer's antlers. Not overly happy. I'm pleased. Uh, the next casting will be better. I'll make sure that this all gets, that the seam is completely closed. And um, I'll make sure there are no other areas that will leak any. Um, as far as cleanup, a little bit of filing. We'll get these little these little pieces on the surface that'll bring them down. Uh, they're so small though. You see where they are. I say not bad. Not bad. Not the happiest of campers, but I'm not totally disappointed. And it came out of the mold without the use of the support wires. So I'm really happy about that. Really happy about that. Uh, the other thing I'm happy about is the, uh, the plastic got to every single tip. There is no missing tine tips anywhere. Uh, powdering the mold eliminated the surface tension, which allowed this, the resin to flow properly. All in all, pretty good. Okay, all those little, those little knobs that were sticking up off the surface of the antlers have been easily removed by a simple light scraping with this cartilage knife. It's as though the little imperfections that were caused from the the way the mold went on too thick in places, it's as though they, they know they don't belong. <laughs> I know this sounds ridiculous. And uh, they're not fighting being evicted. And all I did was scrape along the, uh, the antler with the cartilage knife and those little rises in the surface have uh, all disappeared. Very nicely, I might add. Now what you want to be aware of is you want to be careful that you're not taking off actual uh, little knobs in the antlers that belong. And you can only do that by comparing them to the original. And here's a few more and they just, they're just popping right off the surface beautifully. Without a whole lot of difficulty. It is popping right away and the surface is Unblemished, I must say. There's a, a few little imperfections in the back here. We can get these off. As far as the seams go, these can be scraped down. Um, and any unevenness in the seams can be worked over with a, uh, a like colored epoxy because don't forget that this will be painted too um, this side here I might take part of this down and then rebuild it using sculpting epoxy you know epoxy sculpt or what have you and uh, I get it going like that I, I, this is a this is um, not perfect, but it is salvageable, and that's the main thing. It is salvageable. And all these little knobs that came out of the mold are very easily removed. I'm surprised how easily removed they are. So, okay. I think I'm uh, actually happy over this now. So... I've got a uh, pretty good little gig going on here with this baby. Pretty happy. So here we have first casting, the droopy, sad looking little mold, the support cradle, which I will use um, cartilage knife and a few other things, tools to get this cleaned out and I'll scrape this out. Make sure there's no resin in it for the next pouring. I don't want that to jack the shape of the antlers out of whack by a buildup of um, resin. I will also wax the entire interior of the mold. Um, 
no matter where it was good in other places. I want to make sure we have not, a very little bit of leakage back here. I just want to make sure we have nothing else sticking on the next cast. But for now, it's, pretty, it's a pretty successful job. Uh, I would call this nut-filled candy. Bye for now. Here's the first casting on top of my chosen head form. Okay, now to carefully close the seams, what I did was I lined up parts of the mold, wrapped masking tape around, and then secured it to itself. Not really so much to the silicone, it won't stick. Then I applied silicone all along the seam, smoothing it out, making it level. Remember, I don't want to build, I don't want to build up a layer, I just want to seal it. So I built up a sealing layer using my, the uh, popsicle stick and my modeling tool to finish spreading it. Uh, then what I did was I came a little further behind it and did the same thing. Again, I secured masking tape to itself around the perimeter of the mold in one section, applied silicone, uh, with one drop of tin fix to make it a thickened, a thickened layer so that it would not run, it would stay where I put it. And now I'm going to take a break, have a cup of coffee, a couple of hours, come back and move on down and secure the, the mold all the way down the seam in the same way so that I know I do not have the out of sync seam that caused that bad spot on the first casting. Alright, I've gone ahead and done something some I consider drastic. I consider it uh, kind of sensible. Now I was able to get a good part of the actually most of the um, seam closed with silicone and just this part right here at the base was shifting. It wanted to stay shifted. I took a couple of T-pins, drove them in from one side to the other. Now, before I put them in the support jacket, I'm going to come in with the side cutting pliers. I'm going to snip the tips off. I'm going to leave the pins intact during the casting process. I'm still going to seal the rest of this up. I still want it to be sealed up. I want this to be level and even, and I intend to get it there, but um, I want the inside, I want the interior of this to be absolutely even. Right now it is. When I push up on it, I can see where it separates and it's even on the inside. So I'm going to seal the top of this with silicone. I'm going to keep the pins in. I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to repeat that for the opposite side as well. I've got the tips already sealed. I'm the, not the tips, but I have the, uh, the main, main body of the seam already sealed. And I'm going to continue to seam, to seal the seam here, like I did on this side. I've got masking tape to hold it, and then I apply some silicone. With the pins here, I'm going to be able to complete the silicone's uh, glue all the way up the rest of the seam onto the bottom of the uh, the underside of the um, the mold at the base of the skull. So that's where we're at. All right, I've put a T-pin into the through the wall of the mold down at the bottom of the seam, just before the antler burr meets the base of the skull plate mold. Now, this is what I mean about molding being like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You have to be bold. You make your first casting. Whatever mistakes you find, you correct before you make the next one. You don't just set up the mold and pour another one. If there are problems, 
you have to kind of troubleshoot them. Figure out what you, what you need, get it corrected. The next cast will be a fine cast. And then just keep repeating the same things you did over and over again to make the cast correct. And it will work. It's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, there's some experimentation. And yeah, it's it could be a little pricey. It could be a little a little a little bit of money involved to make the mold the way you want it. But to me, this is a lot of fun. And I'll tell you what the reward is. The reward is a casting that you can look at it and you can say, "Hey, that is dynamite." Now, the first one, like I said, it had its faults, but it the antlers can be used. They can be used. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. All right, as you can see, the seams are completely sealed. And the reason is this whole pile of towels under it. I propped up the antler mold so that it would curve in a natural position, in a natural way, so that the seaming could be done all the way down. I left the T-pins in the base of the antlers. I did have pins throughout the rest of the uh, the entire uh, length of the antlers every so many inches or so. And a T-pin, it only went through the wall of the mold from one wall of the mold into the opposite wall of the mold. It didn't go through the mold. So there's no holes done to the inside surface of the mold. You can feel on the inside that the mold seam is smooth. This was done to both sides. And as you can see, the inside of the right side of the mold that was full of resin, that's been completely cleaned out, both on the inside and the outside of the mold. I used a combination of a uh, cartilage knife, also, a couple of my uh, hoof knives, hoof sh uh, shearing knives. This is a farrier's tool. Works great for cutting away parts of uh, things that you, you don't want, um, the, the, the excess resin that was on the mold, for instance. It's also good in reshaping head forms and life-size mannequins. as a wide one, and then we have this one here. It's a little narrower. Nice sharp edge on the blade. It's a real good tool to use. I also incorporated the slim rougher. This is the narrow version of the stout rougher. These uh, little teeth on the head helped me to clean this out. Really basically turned it to dust and I was able to brush it out and then vacuum up the whole thing. After that the mold was waxed using the Sonite wax from Smooth On. The Smooth On product. That was applied with a disposable brush all over the mold interior. I'll give it a second coating as well as a coating on the outside of the mold just to make sure. Then the silicone mold will be placed in the cradle. The whole thing will be assembled and ready for the next pour. Okay, I want I'm, I'm going to cut the T-pin short. I'm going to leave the bend on end of one of the T-pins so that the pin will be easy to remove. There we are. So now we've got a little head on here. And I can push this in further and push this in and it will not interfere with the fiberglass uh, support jacket. Then using uh, the pliers on my Leatherman tool, 
I simply turn it in the direction I want and push the pin in. They're not on the inside of the mold, they're within the mold. I'm leaving these so that this does not accidentally get pulled apart. I'm going to wax the inside of the mold all the way up the tines and on the outside of the mold. Well, the support cradle, the mold jacket, I should say. I don't expect I don't expect any spills, but if there is, this will keep it from sticking to the fiberglass. That was a little tough to remove, but I got the job done. This next step needs to be done very carefully, gingerly, I guess you could say. We don't want to open up the seams on the silicone mold, so I'm going to put it in the cradle, going in upside down. Gently bring the cradle under, evenly all, evenly all around, like so. Bring it into place. Lift it up into place. Open this up. Put the skull portion in. The skull portion into place. Be careful not to tear the seams open. I don't want to tear open the incisions. Carefully, carefully, gently, get it back into place. Takes a little doing. Got it out this way, it can go back in this way. Very carefully. All right, skull cap portion is in place. We need to get the tines and the main beams in their respective places in the mold very carefully, very carefully. Okay. Now I'm going to put the middle section back in. I'm back in place anyway. To help set this properly. Make sure I've got the front to back correct. here. I'm going to turn it right side up. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to let the silicone just kind of relax and set itself down into the support cradle. I've seen a couple places where it needs to be kind of tucked in for the night. Tip here. Right. And once that's in, the rest of the mold follows. And then once this is tightened up, everything else will tend to line up. So now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the hardware uh, onto the main support. Now after waxing the parts of the mold where resin leaked out before, it actually didn't leak out down here, 
it leaked out up at the top where the seam was uneven and ran down to the lowest point which was here and then poured out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that these tines are covered. These lower tines are all covered. Well, they're upper tines when it's right side up, lower tines when it's upside down. I'm doing that on both sides. All right, now they've been covered with the Sonite wax. I'm going to do the same thing I did the first time. Masking tape all around. But instead of trying to wrap it completely around and around and around, I'm going to wrap it around because there's wax everywhere now. I'm going to just make sure it has a nice grip on the silicone, a gentle but firm grip, and tape it to itself. It will not stick to this fiberglass because it's been waxed. doesn't matter if it's inexpensive masking tape like what I've got or an expensive brand. It will not stick. No matter how many times you wrap it around, the wax will get on it and it will get away. So just put the tape onto itself and go down as far as you can go and give it a, a snug hold like so. Okay, <clears throat> I think I'm ready to pour the next mold. Uh, well, pour the next casting at any rate. Making sure this is all lined up in the cradle in the correct place. It's held down nice and nice and strong. Here we go. Like uh, the first time, I'm going to start with one side, this side, and. Uh, Let's check inside. I don't feel any seams out of alignment. The seams, you can't even feel the seams. That's how well aligned they are. Just as before, when I pour the second antler, I'm going to make a 3 ounce A, 3 ounce part B mix for a 6 ounce pour. The mistake I made the very first pour was I mixed up 12 ounces of resin. Way too much. So I'm going to make a 3 ounce pour. Three ounces of pour B. Three ounces of part A. Like so. And these then go into a larger cup. These go into a larger cup. Part B. Part A. Stir it thoroughly. I'm going to pour it in. Half filled, half filled, take it out, move it around to be sure every, every part of the mold gets resin. Tip it again. Pour the resin in. I'm going to pour it all in. The entire 
mix. Now, <clears throat> lightly tap on the outside of the support cradle. Squeeze the tines a little bit to try and get some air out. Like so. Keep it tipped. Make sure that it gets down to the tips of the antler. Put this in place. It should start kicking in any minute. Just knocking out any air that might be trapped anywhere in the mold. sure it goes down to the very tip. Put it back in the support cradle. And let the cradle sit at an angle. bubble that needs to be burst here on the surface of the skull plate. Don't want that there. All right, it's starting to gel up. It's gelling up beautifully. Beginning to thicken. Beginning to, beginning to go through a heat cycle. Okay. Now the resin is starting to kick. How well you can see that starting to kick. Now while it's gelling, you do not disturb it. Let it rest like so. Let it rest on its tines. Just hold it for a bit. I'm not going to worry about a wire. This is good the way it is. Second side. Halfway in, got a little sloppy there, wipe this off, I want that on there, I'm a little manipulating, make sure it gets into every part of the mold, bring it back down this way, and back again. Well, this is the side that leaked the first time, and I'm not going to let it leak again. Back in the support cradle, get the rest of the resin into the mold. all in. This is the side with the defective little hole, so I want to make sure that it gets in, into all of the tips. So I squeeze these, make sure I squeeze out the air. Squeeze this one here. Squeeze the brow tine. Squeeze the tip of the mold. Make sure it all got into everywhere. Now I knock it about a little bit. <clears throat> Just make sure I'm knocking the air out. Move this all about. I'm going to shake it all about. I'm going to coat the entire thing. 
spill some out of the antlers coat the entire skull plate area now replace the resin make sure that the antler bar is completely filled the cups together off to the side no liquidat no liquidat very good no liquidat and this is starting to go through heat beautiful I feel heat going all the way down the tips and now she's starting to set very nice very nice in the cradle in the cradle there we go tip it keep it tipped just keep it tipped that's all you need to do keep it tipped I'll let it start to set There's no leaking, now I'm just hoping that it gets everywhere it's supposed to go. There we go. Just like that. came from but I have a little bit of leakage showing right through this little access port just a little bit of leakage didn't run down the entire thing and it has not leaked out onto the table so hopefully the seam stayed intact may have been one of the little the smaller areas of the seams that was put together with a layer of silicone could have possibly popped getting it back into the support cradle. We'll know when it's opened up. I don't think there's a lot. Well, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see when it's opened. Okay. I'm going with about one and a half cup, um, one and a half ounces per part. I'm going to mix it in a little smaller cup this time. This is for the skull plate. This is for the skull plate. The leaking doesn't look as bad as the first one that was poured, so I'm not really overly concerned. I say you'll always get something on a seam like that. I mean, I spent <laughs> several hours closing the seam. I would apply some silicone, make sure it was sealed properly, walk away for a couple of hours, come back to it, and add some more. Did that over the course of a couple of days. Let the entire thing sit overnight. Now, let's make sure this is level here. Good that way. Good this way. Okay. Let's get this resin in for the skull plate. first skull plate I poured the first skull plate I poured was a um, one ounce per side this one is one and a half ounce per side for part A part B one and a half ounce and I think I need to hold this level yeah I need to hold this level until she kicks and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to hold it until it kicks. That's about it. The base of the skull plate has set. Uh, it just needs to finish curing around the very edges. But basically, the level is set.
And here I mixed up about a half ounce of A and B. Mixed it together just to top this off. I want this to come up to the very bottom of, of the mold. I don't want to deny the skull plate any height. That's why that's been mixed up. And because of the heat coming through from the bulk of the skull plate resin, this will start to cure. Well, it's starting to cure right now as, as we're watching, which is a very cool thing. Now, the little bit of excess that's in the bottom of these cups, that's going to be poured back into the respective containers, then wiped out with paper towel. Now, here you go. She's setting. You can see it beginning to kick in over here, where it's a little deeper. And it'll work its way back to the thinnest spot. And just a touch more. And there we go. There we have it. Now time to clean up and let this fully cure. And then I'll unmold it. And we'll see what we'll see what kind of chocolates we've got. Time to open up the box of chocolates. Do this by first removing all the masking tape. They look like a doctor opening up the cast of a patient. Now it looks like we had a little little tiny leakage right here. Let's see. Right there, right there, just a wee little tiny bit. Oh, that's really nothing. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the masking tape, take it off the cradle, I'll take it off the support, open the cradle, we'll open the mold on camera. Uh, pull these T pins out of the pull the T pins out of the base of the mold. Put that in with the hardware. I'll use them again. Okay. And let's see what we got this time. Open up the seams. The leakage is just minimal at best. Now, this was the side right here, the side with the defect that had all of the problems with the mold falling, folding in on itself, rolling in on itself. And here, all we have is flashing. That's wonderful. I'm going to open it up. Ouch. Flashing could be a little sharp. Be careful. Where do you think all these cuts came from? <laughs> there we are. Here we go down here. Open this puppy uppy. And what's nice is you can pick away all of the silicone that was used to seal it like so. The little bit of powder that gets on the outside of the mold when it's being powdered allows you to peel this away. And that's really a good thing. That's really a good thing. Now, that's what we got. Oh boy. Come on, baby. One brow time. Two brow tines. No, I was worried that the brown tines didn't get filled. The mold is real thick there, and it's really hard to determine by squeezing that the mold at that point whether or not you've got filling. Looks like a good box of chocolates today. Okay, now here is the the odd little defect on my deer's antler. That area, and we'll pop that out. Come on, baby. Pop out. There it is. Time to pull some more tines. We'll grab it. Let this slide out, hopefully. 
Give a little twist and we pull and ouch. I just opened a cut I had on my thumb. The tines are on the sharp side for sure. Now we move it forward and off. This is the side that was originally turned in on the first casting. It's even all the way down. Real nice. Just requires a little chasing, a little finishing to get the flashing off. Same thing on this side. It's going to have to work the flashing away. Some filing, a little sanding, and you can see how it that's how thin the resin is. Came through the seam, actually, and formed the flashing. But, flashing is thin, comes right off. Oh, there we go. I had to open it up further. Further down. Now she'll stretch and allow it to the tines to come out. Here we go. And here we go. One last put on the side. Just some flashing, nothing that's hard to clean up. That's mold making and casting. Well done on this one, well done. This is a good set of antlers. Like I say, when you learn, after you make your first casting, you learn what you did wrong, and you then know what to do to make it right. Extraordinarily happy with this casting. The way this first set can be repaired is very simple. The base of the antlers of the mold, I should say, the base mold on the antlers, this section here, actually the front half turned under. It turned under, in on itself. The way to fix that is simple. There's two ways. You can mix up some sculpting epoxy. Try and match the color or not, it really doesn't matter. Lay the epoxy in the area to be repaired to fill. Take the mold, powder the mold, take the mold, and after the epoxy sets up a bit, wrap the front part of the mold around that antler burr and sort of form it. Trim away any excess. That's one way. The second way is to mix up the epoxy, lay it in the front part of the mold where it's weak on the casting, let it nearly set, peel it out, Secure it to the antlers, model it into place, trim away what you don't need. That's one of two ways to fix that. But that's the first set of antlers. And here is the second casting of my deer's antlers. I'm real pleased, real pleased. Just a little cleanup on the seams, which is the usual thing to do when you're molding and casting and creating castings. They have to be cleaned up and prepped before painting. And like I say, there will be a, another video made 
on the finishing that's going to go on with these antlers. And that'll entail repairing the one set, making the repair to the one set I just mentioned, as well as coloring and finishing. So here we go. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I got a kick out of it. And uh, we'll see you again down the line. Adios, amigos.